Hallelujah. 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 Everybody in this place, you realize you're not supposed to be talking about the things of the kingdom of God with a frown on your face. All right, everybody understands that? Yeah, everybody understands that when you begin to talk to people about the kingdom of God, joy is supposed to hit you. You're supposed to be overwhelmed with joy and a kindness and an exuberance that literally is something that is beyond you. You don't even hardly recognize yourself when you begin to talk to people about the things of the Spirit, about the things of the kingdom of God. If you go after this, it will happen to you. I'm telling you, I observe this transition in my life all the time. You know, I can be tired, I can be completely worn out, barely able to keep my eyes open, and then as soon as I'm on the spot, starting to talk, representing the kingdom of God, I will be overwhelmed with this joy, with this kindness, with this, with this you know, just beauty. It's just a beauty of character. If you're not going after that, and if you don't understand that, you, need, you understand it now, and it's one of the laws of functioning and flowing in the Spirit. God the Holy Ghost wants to train you how to be beautiful instead of, how to be heavenly instead of earthly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, very, very important. If you weren't here on Wednesday night, you have to get the tape and you have to listen to the YouTube because it really sets the premise of, of what I'm going to be talking about tonight and really understanding that if we want to do the kingdom of God, if we want to do the ministry of Jesus Christ, then we're going to have to understand that area in which those who have gone on before us from, from everybody in the Old Testament, everybody in the New Testament, everybody that has lived since uh, the New Testament was written that have made breakthroughs. They've showed us, oh, here is this realm. Here is this realm of glory. They've, by their own sacrifice, by their own commitment to the Lord, stepped into the areas of signs, wonders, and miracles and showed us, wait a minute, this realm does really exist, brought us into a realization, that much more conscious understanding that, that, that those things are available to us now. Okay, of course, the, this, the Word of God makes them unlimited, but clearly when we see Wigglesworth breaking through to a whole other level of signs and wonders and miracles, we understand they're available now. I can't go back through what I gave you on Wednesday night. There is no way. And, and, and even trying to do so, I'm, I'm missing it, okay? But I'm just saying, you're going to have to go listen to that because that's going to set the precedence for how you're going to be able to move forward. So what I, I want to do to... Tonight, I just want to, in the realms of the School of Spirit, I just want to talk to you about the fact that God has purposed that you and I understand that the gospel is supposed to be preached with signs and wonders and miracles and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And we've got to understand that at the same time, until we get desperate and hungry for it, we will never give ourselves to those areas of submission to God that brings then the breakthrough, that brings that that revelation and that manifestation to us to, so that we understand how to move effectively with God. And, and so let me just try to set things up like this to start with. I believe it's Luke chapter 6 verse 40 says that the disciple is not above his master. Are you with me? Everybody understand that? So does everybody agree that the disciple is not above his master? Yes. Okay, then that means that you don't expect to get what Jesus did without fasting because he fasted. Because if you think that you're going to get it without fasting, then you believe that you're, a you're, you're above your master. Jesus gave himself to all night prayer vigils. He was constantly going to prayer for ultimately for him to have in his life those things that he had in his life. And if you believe you can have them without doing them, then you believe that in fact that you're actually above your, you're a disciple that is above your master. Jesus didn't do anything except for what he saw the Father do, which he was being led, empowered by God to be able to do. I want you to understand this. Okay, because this is a really big thing and an important threshold for us to understand. And so let me kind of give it to you like this because I'm going somewhere with this. I want you to understand this. I want, first of all, you must understand that until you engage yourself in ministry, you are never going to understand why or how or the function of the endowment of power from on high. God baptizes the Holy Ghost in power for one purpose, to go and demonstrate heaven and the, his ministry. That's it. He didn't do us with power from on high to go do whatever, to go study the Bible. You don't need to be endued with power from on high to study the Bible. Just be born again, hallelujah, new heart, new spirit, you receive his spirit, and now you can study the Bible, and the Holy Ghost will cause you to see and cause you to hear and cause you to understand. However, 
you're not going to sit in his presence too long and he's going to, you're going to hear him say, who will go for us, okay? The reason I know that everybody's supposed to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and power is because he's called every one of us to be witnesses. Somebody said, must I be baptized in the Holy Ghost and power uh, uh, and receive the Pentecostal experience in order to make heaven? No, all you need to do is be born again. But being born again with a heart and a new heart and a new spirit that's in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is going to bring you to a place of wanting to obey God and you're going to hear him say, who will go for us? And as soon as you respond, I will go, he will say, you must be and do this power from on high so that you can be my witnesses. So we understand that God has given us a unique power. It is a power to see people's lives changed, to turn men from darkness to light, to deliver them from the power of Satan and bring them into the realms of the power of God to open up their eyes spiritually. But that's not all. Not, not, all, not only the conversion of the soul and of the spirit, the conversion of the heart and of the life, becoming the miracle of the new birth, but also to be able to have a power and authority that breaks through doubt and unbelief and the forces of hell that would hold back people from hearing the gospel. That's what signs, wonders, and miracles and a demonstration of the Holy Ghost is about. So that the people of Acts said, Barnabas and Saul, Paul rather, have come down, the gods have come down to us in the form of men. Why? They saw the miracles that was going on. Hallelujah. Pretty radical, huh? And um, that's what Father wants us to do. But we also know that because Jesus told us to imitate him. And once again, is a disciple above their master? Well, if you believe you can do what Jesus did without fasting and praying, you believe that you're, you're above your master. If you believe you can do what Jesus did without being baptized in the Holy Ghost and learning how to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost, then you believe you're above your master. So we're going to have to understand in this context now, knowing what God has called us to do and being willing to do it and then being in, intensely impacted by our lack of authority, we will then be motivated to start doing what he did. Uh, I, I try to imagine myself, what would it be like for me if I didn't throw myself into ministry? I would probably just be as, you know, just like any other ordinary, everyday, average Christian who sits around frustrated, not knowing how to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Well, you get a meeting going, and everybody in that meeting who gives themselves to ministry, whether it's full-time ministry, lay ministry, or parachurch ministry, those will be the people who will flow in the gifts of the Spirit as is outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Everybody else will sit by and be spectators. That's it. They might have a poem, a psalm, a scripture verse to read, and a little, little you know, message to go along with it. But they won't flow in the gifts of the Spirit as is described in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And what I want to do for you today, tonight, in the School of Spirit, is I want to help you understand something that Father's willed to happen. Now, if we're saying, Father, we want to do your will, not our will, we want to have church the way you've designed it, not the way we've designed it, then there's something going to take place where we're going to become earnest about then participating with Father, what Father has revealed. What Father has revealed is that the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ be made manifest in the midst of his church. And he described it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 11, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every single person. Okay, so that we can profit from it and that we know what those are, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits, the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, the gift of faith. Oh, I mean, seeing that work, you know, if you want to see that work, you have to get people who are, to, you got to bring people together who are full-time in ministry or full-time in par, par, or give themselves to parachurch ministry that demands that they flow in the Holy Ghost. Because you give yourself to parachurch ministry and all you're going to do basically is go, you know, and babysit somebody, you know, babysit somebody in the kingdom of God, so to speak, give them a little message, sing a little song, do a little dance, and that's all you're expecting, that's all they're expecting. But all of a sudden, when now you're wanting the ministry of Jesus to be displayed, or you're wanting, to see, you're, you're, you're pressing in to see soul saves, altar call responses, a miracle of salvation come on people, signs and wonders and miracles because there's disease and sicknesses and torments in the place. Now the press is on. Now all of a sudden you have to begin to deal with your inability to flow in the Holy Ghost. Now there are people who stop along the way and they make excuses. They just, you know, they imagine all these excuses. 
they don't ever really make God God and his word true and recognize, wait a minute, I have responsibility to imitate Jesus. G uh, Paul preached the gospel with signs and wonders and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost just like Jesus. This area is available, then I've got to understand if I want to go there, I'm going to have to be willing to get hungry for it, to get desperate for it. And as I do, I'm going to make a study out of everybody who ever, made, who ever entered in that realm, both in, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and, and people that maybe are alive today, people especially that were alive, A.A. A. Allen, uh, Wigglesworth, John G. Lake, Pop Seymour. I'm going to look at what went on in their life. I'm going to come to understand there was a price to pay. There was a price to pay, okay? The price to pay for the miracle ministry of Jesus. There's a price to pay. Um, today, I just, I, I put, if you follow me on Facebook, I've just posted just a little, little note. A. Allen, God gave him 11, actually gave him 13 points. He published 11 of what it, the price they have to pay to flow in, in the, the miracle ministry of Jesus, okay? If people are going to ignore that, they are not hungry. I'm going to go and look, I'm going to, I'm going to make a study out of John G. Lake. I'm going to make a study out of Alexander Dowie. I'm going to make a study out of A. Allen, Oral Roberts. I'm, anybody that, who's got anything available on what they did, what they went through, what they heard from God, because I'm going to tell you right now, everybody who has ever used for God, by God in this realm, fully gave themselves over to ministry and became desperate about having the ministry of Jesus in their life. And anything short of that, you don't have it. And so therefore, if we have anything short of that and we're okay with it, then we're not doing the will of God. And so it's fine. We just need to get real honest with ourselves and say we're comfortable living out our life and not doing the will of God, just doing 50% of it, 25% of it, or some of it. I shut up for church, you should be happy. The Lord wasn't happy with the, old, uh, uh, you know, the saints in the Old Testament showing up for the church when they were showing up in the wrong way. So what I want you to understand is, once again, Luke chapter 6, verse 40, that the disciple is not above his master. And, and the Lord has given us the privilege of being as our master. He's endued us with the privilege of having the same compassion for a lost and dying world that he does. If you want to look at the whole of God's ministry, if you want to look at the big general view of the school of the Spirit and what it's all about, you have to look at just one thing, lost and dying world, souls. Now, there's the influence of secular humanism. There's the influence of various different dogma and doctrine and philosophies and traditions about how you can effectively reach the lost and a dying world. But Christ Jesus revealed to us the will of the Father. And he began to show us very specifically how it is that we're going to live consecrated lives, lives separated unto his will and to his purpose in order to be able to move in this. Because if you think you can live an unholy life and work the miracles of Jesus, then you believe you're above your master. And I could go through the list. I can keep hitting you with this over and over and over and over again. Because, and, and I think that you've got it, and I think it's simple en enough to understand. Jesus showed us a, a life, 30 years consecrated in faithfulness to God, just because it was all about relationship. It wasn't about ministry. It wasn't about success. It wasn't about doing your own thing. It was about doing what Father had willed to do and ultimately coming to a place of understanding and really highlighting this that until you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, until you receive an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, you are not able to begin to have any kind of effective ministry that is going to impact your culture and the world around you that is going to be redemptive. Do you understand that? Does that make sense? Jesus did nothing for 30 years. That doesn't say, well, we're going to follow that model and do nothing for 30 years. Because, you know, that just simply isn't the case then we can break down that argument with the fact that the disciples are only in this for three years, okay? And then I can break down that argument and say that the Samaritans were only in it for a couple of weeks, okay? And the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost was available to them, and so on. So, you know, we, we have to understand those various different examples for what they are expressing and not take them beyond that context of what they're expressing, okay? So, once again, the Lord has called every one of us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I know right now that if I, I'm going to just tell you, because I can, I can stand around praying the Holy Ghost and I can get all kinds of ideas. 
and then say, Lord, let me go do it. And then he's going to say, listen, you, I've got you doing this. You, you raise people up to do it. And I can suggest people to, to do things. If you're desperately hungry and I suggest something to you, you're going to do it. You're going to find a way to do it. If you're not, you're going to hedge it. You'll hedge it. You just have to understand. You ain't responding to me, and it ain't about me and you. It's about you and Father. Okay, so he goes, if I'm getting ideas and throwing out at you, you should have a hundred for every one of mine. Huh? Because I got a hundred for myself. Plus, I'm getting them for you. A hundred different views. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting one or two or three for everybody. And I'm texting you and I'm emailing you people that I believe would go to work. If they, you know, I told my wife the other night, she said, there's some people, I'm just going to start telling them, you get yourself doing this right now. Or go, you know, go someplace else and pretend. And because I, I get that way, I get a little edgy, you know. Come on, man, when are you going to get something done? You know what you could do right now? You could, in, in no time, if you had the capacity, you could have 10,000 people giving your kids to you for summer camps because they don't know what to do with them. And you take them to the beach. But you don't know what to do with 10,000. But do you know what to do with 10? But see, the thing about it is, is when you throw yourself into ministry, you're going to have this. And then you're going to ultimately find yourself right in the very midst of caring for people, having a divine compassion for people, and moving in a gifting and a power of the Holy Ghost that is in a very practical application. Okay? Because, you know, I told Stuart, and I've told Stuart many times, and I'm going to tell Allie, and I'm going to tell a couple of other people, you guys need to go here, and, and Scott, and a couple of other clinicians, you guys should do, invite kids to come for a free checkup. Huh? And if anybody gets sued, blame it on me. I'll go to jail. I mean, because, I mean, don't be barred by faithlessness. Don't be barred by this stuff. Are you listening to me? Yes. Because then you go and you start talking to people about these things, suddenly you're going to begin to at least get them here. If you can't get them in the door, get them at the doorstep. Because I tell you right now, if you start doing that, all of a sudden you say, look, this, this is this need, this need, this need. You need the, 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 this baby needs to get a dental checkup. So, you know, do you have insurance for dental? dental? And they might say no, and maybe you may even have a solution for that. But you could say, listen, we can pray for the baby right now, and the Lord Jesus will touch the baby. Uh-oh. Now, all of a sudden, you're getting in the throes of things. Because then at the end of the day, you got to go home. You're leaving everything to the Lord, but we know what the Lord wants to do through you if he could just get through to you. <laughs> and this is training. You grow in this miracle, signs and wonders. By application. By going home. and get, Because now you've got a motive to go to prayer. You fall down on your face and say, Oh God, I'm pathetic. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even get somebody healed of a, of a, of a, of a, you know, a toothache. Much less raise the dead. Are you with me here? Yeah. Yeah. That is the motive. This suddenly you're not sitting around going, man, I just don't have the motivation. You don't have the motivation because you're not moving in the obedience. The, moving in the obedience is going to give you the motivation. It's going to take, take you to your knees in prayer as long as you don't lower the bar and change the threshold of what the will of God is. You can change the threshold and say, okay, the Lord just wanted me to take all the kids and have fun with them. They all jump around and I'll be happy and go home and be better kids at the house. No, that's not God's will. That's not his threshold. That's not the bar he said. He said he wants their lives to be impacted, not by you, but by the power of the Holy Ghost that flows through you so they have a supernatural encounter with, with heaven, with the living God. And that's for the, that's for the, that's not only for the, you know, young kids, it's older kids and adults and, and grandparents. And suddenly, when you begin to fully engage and Jesus said, you want to be my disciple? And I say to people, how, how, many of you are, how many of you are disciples of Jesus? If I go to any place and I say, how many of you are disciples of Jesus? Everybody raise their hand. How many people do signs and wonders and miracles? Then a few bold people raise their hand. But being a disciple of Jesus is connected with imitating him. And recognizing that he baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire so that we could be able to imitate him. But it is giving ourselves to that that w then we begin to understand how to be sensitive with the Holy Ghost, how to move with the Holy Ghost, how to let the Spirit of the Lord 
begin to develop us in a place where he has complete preeminence over our lives. The more you pray in the Holy Ghost, the stronger it's going to be. The more you give yourself to the manifest presence of God, the stronger it's going to be. In that realm, we literally are now being moved beyond the, the sense realm of what you see and what you hear and what you know after the natural. And now you're able by the Spirit of the Lord to begin to explore whole new dimensions of the unseen, unlimited realm of divine power where all things are possible for those who will believe. It, is, it will not happen with us being fixated on the things of the self realm because we're so lazy, we want to sit in front of the TV and, and, and you know, drink lemonade and be comfortable. Instead of getting up and going and paying the price and sacrificing and denying ourselves and taking up our cross, all of these things speaking to us about giving ourselves completely over to the will of God, no matter what it costs us, no matter what expense we have to pay, it's the price of the supernatural. And we want to try to have a church, a church service, a church meeting, a, a church as is described in the Bible, which is the fullness of Jesus Christ with a bunch of people who are not doing what God said to do, who are preoccupied, they're trapped. I understand the trap. The trap is this. You go to work for 10 hours a day. You come home completely exhausted. You eat something and now you're even that much more exhausted from the whole effect of the food on you. Now maybe you prop up your feet and you watch some news. You fall, start falling asleep and you decide to go to bed. And that's the routine. And then Saturday comes and now you're overwhelmed with the fact that the car's not washed, that the, the things that you need to take care of with the house aren't done, the yard's not not fixed up, etc., etc., and your life goes on. And you've got this gigantic excuse of why you never followed Jesus. But we followed you, Lord. Sunday morning, we were there. Sunday night, we were there. Wednesday night, we were there. School of the Spirit, we were there. And he's going to say, what did you do with it? Were you there doing what I want you to do, bringing forth the fruits which I demand of your life? God demands of our life the fruits of the Holy Ghost, this wonderful dimension of supernatural power and supernatural character, God power and God character, to where we walk in to this place so, so engaged in representing God. I watch people. I watch it over and again. I watched it just Wednesday night where people are busy doing their own thing, uh, you know, playing with the kids, talking to one another, looking at something, and they don't recognize that there's somebody sitting right behind you that don't even know Jesus. And you're oblivious to it because your heart's not captivated by God. You haven't learned how to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. He gives you 360 peripheral vision. Three-dimensional, four-dimensional peripheral, peripheral vision. You're so aware of the lost that are around you, the hurting, dying, sick, unfortunate people that are around you. Are you listening to me? Yes. But until you get engaged, you are in darkness. You're in darkness. You're dark in darkness spiritually. You can't think spiritually. You only think about your own interests, those things that are valuable and meaningful to you that really are, are completely locked into a self realm. And Father says, you got, if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself every day. Take up your cross and follow me. So we've got to, you know, once again, the Lord has me on the press with people to demand of them fruit and to, to demand of them to get real. Decide what you're going to do, but just be real. Don't play pretend. Be real. And don't say that you can sit around in here without a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When Jesus showed us a sacrifice and have what he commanded us to be. Otherwise, you're saying you're above your master. Can you hear me? I want you to grab a hold of the fact that we get to live this abundant life. I mean, it's a sacrifice because it's, a, it, it, it's not convenient for us. It's, it's a behaving after the manner of, of a realm that is completely opposed to everything that is in the world. It's learning how to be persecuted and loving through it. Huh? It's learning how to move under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and Him alone. Satan called on Jesus to to execute his own eternal power and turn a rock into bread. Jesus had an understanding of first and foremost how not to do it by any other thing but Holy Ghost suggestion. Well, we've never, many people have never even faced 
the dimension of surrender to God. Were they able to separate out the difference between their own suggestions to themselves and divine suggestion? They have no ability to separate that out. Praise God, many have come to a place, at least from a moral perspective, that they can separate out to some degree the suggestions of the demonic versus what God was to be saying on those things that are good and evil. Obviously, lust of the flesh versus fruits of the Spirit. But Satan can come very subtly and suggest things to you and you act on them. Pastor doesn't love you. And you act on it. Pastor doesn't pay attention to you. And you act on it. Pastor's speaking bad about you. He doesn't like you. He thinks you're just, you know, a loser. Demonic suggestions. Probably not even so. And now you act on it? <laughs> yeah. The school of spirit is going to teach you how to walk in love, how to have everything go through the filter of the Holy Ghost before you ever even begin to move on it. Are you with me? Huh? If it can't get past Holy Ghost, it can't touch you. Because you, you, you in a shield of faith and fiery darts can't touch you. You've learned how to give yourself to love. You've learned how to give yourself to joy. You've learned how to give yourself to forgiveness and mercy. You've learned how to give yourself to love. Not like they were saying at the DNC last night when a transvestite stood up there. I mean, I see if you were watching me, I said, my goodness, the DNC needs to get some diversity. All I've seen is sodomite after after sodomite, you know, and, and, and say that this is love and call uh, the fact that you give, they, they call their morality, their morality is the acceptance of immorality and the, and, and the morality of the Bible are, is acts of hate. No, 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 that's all that they were saying, the overtones of what they were saying. Well, what happens at the end of the analysis, I can sit back there and feel all upset about them and get upset at all that they're doing, or I can recognize it's my fault. It's my fault because I'm not pressed God's people to start doing what God's told them to do. I've allowed them to live in the love of ease. I've allowed them to live in the comfort of their pursuits of their own life and self-interest while they give God a little bit of part-time service and say somehow that they've given themselves over to fully surrendering to God. Hey, listen, Father has called us to live in holiness, a complete consecration to His will. That's what holiness is. He's, given, he's called us to a place of giving ourselves over to that place of walk before Him and be perfect. Huh? To be, but to be, but as many as perfect are as their master. I mean, you give yourself over to saying, look, I'm, I am consecrated. Perfect is saying, I am consecrated to doing it your way and not making any excuses for myself. Are you listening to me? Yes. I'm not going to self-justify. I'm not going to make excuses for myself. I'm going all the way with you, God. I'm going to be upright in my heart. I'm going to be upright in my confession. You told me to imitate you. I'm going to imitate you. You told me to imitate God. I'm going to imitate you. You gave me the power of the Holy Ghost to go reach the lost. I'm not going to make excuses for myself. And I'm not going to do it on the basis of human philosophies, religious philosophies, Religious traditions. I'm not going to do it on the basis of some kind of influence of secular humanism. I'm going to do it strictly on the basis of what Jesus Christ modeled and showed for me to do. Signs, wonders, and miracles, the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to learn how to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to learn how to give myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service, which is the life and ministry characterized by the person Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you want to be my disciple, you must imitate me. We want to have a music ministry and say we're imitating God. My goodness, he didn't show us no music ministry, people. Yeah, yeah. And I, come on, are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah. You've got to grab a hold of this. Hallelujah. You've got to grab a hold. You cannot harden your heart. You harden your heart. And you'll never, you'll never participate with a glorious church. You'll be a hindrance to a glorious church. Because then people are going to come in and they're going to be all excited about signs and wonders and miracles. And wow, this is the best thing. We get to live in heaven. How long have you been here? Oh, I've been here for 50 years. <laughs> you mean I'm going to look like you in 50 years? I thought by like next year I was going to look like Jesus. I mean, have you been here in this church for 50 years? Hearing about signs and wonders and miracles and the ministry of Jesus? I wouldn't tell anybody. And they say, well, how long have you been here? If you're not doing signs, wonders and miracles and full of joy and full of the expressions of the divine power and glory of God, just say, I can't recall right now. <laughs> but I do notice one thing. I've really decided that I really want to be a part of this ministry. What ministry? The ministry of Jesus. Yes. People want to be a part of the ministry of the Assemblies of God Church, the Baptist Church, the Nazarene Church, the Pentecostal Church of God, the Methodist Church. 
No, no, no. God is asking you and I to come and be a part of His ministry, of the ministry of the Holy Ghost, of the ministry of heaven, of the ministry of the kingdom of God, of the ministry of the Father, the ministry that Jesus mocked for us. We're going to have to sort through stuff and, and not pay, play, play pretend because if we're playing pretend, our heart's not perfect anymore. We're lying to ourselves. See, God the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth and He's not going to mix it up with life. He won't. I think that when people begin to get serious, the first thing that they begin to do is they begin to say, okay, Lord, where am I being insincere with you? Where am I, where am I trying to get you to compromise with me? Where is it that I got a falsehood going on in my life? You know, shine a floodlight of, your he uh, shine a floodlight of heaven upon my soul and let me see what's going on inside of me. Hmm? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. Because we've accommodated everything, even transvestites. That's where it's come to. We've accommodated you and that you've got to go to work and you don't have time because you're so tired and you're so worn out and you got this and you got that and there's this issue and that issue. And it's been accommodating all the way to the point that now the compromise has brought us to where we are at in our society. The only thing that's going to bust this thing, the only thing that's going to change this thing is signs and wonders and miracles. This is a darkness that can only be pierced. And I'm going to tell you, I believe that Enoch was up against far worse opposition and far worse immorality than what we face today. I believe that in the past, these men, Elijah was up against far worse immorality, far worse opposition, far worse social pressures, far worse culture, cultural pressures. Abraham had the same issue about whether or not he was going to be able to, uh, you know, pry Sarah up out of her house as you are. Are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah. Or whatever it is the dynam dynamics are. Because we all have to face them. The reality of it is, is it's not thinking through the whole program and understanding the end from the beginning. The Lord alone understands that. It's walking with the Lord in a consecration and commitment today that says, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to take what ministries in my life right now at this very moment. And I'm going to reach to God to be as effective as Jesus would be in it. If Jesus showed up in San Diego today, tomorrow the place would be packed. I promise you. You listen to me. You can point your finger at everybody else and accuse everybody else and somebody else's fault and some other issue. And this, Jesus showed up with his ministry in San Diego today. Tomorrow the place would be packed. And he's asking you and I to go for him. He's asking you and I to get real with him. He's asking you and I to pay the price that he showed us to pray. He's asking you and I to lay down our life the way he showed us how to lay down our life. He's asking you and I. He's empowered us with everything that we have need of. And he's asking us to learn how to be led by the Spirit and walk in the Holy Ghost and not do things out of our own thinking realm. And people, this is one of the biggest hindrances. People doing things out of their own thinking realm. They give themselves to just talk, 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 talk. And it grieves the Holy Spirit. Talk about the weather, talk about the sports, talk about this and talk about that and run people down because at the, with the multitudes of words, there is no lack of sin. Just understand it, mark it down. You got a, you got a mouth that's yapping, you got sin going right, left, and center. Huh? Sit and be quiet. And wait for the Holy Ghost to move on you so you can start talking about something real and something meaningful. I love the whole model that we see with Smith Wigglesworth. We look, he actually went and explored those regions in God that no one else was tapping into. He explored those regions in God by consecrating himself to live the life of Jesus, giving himself to nothing secular whatsoever, whatsoever. Um, you know, Lester Summerall tells about a time where he went and knocked on uh, Smith Wigglesworth's door. He had a newspaper under his hand and he saw those, those hard piercing eyes of Wigglesworth look at what was underneath his arm and he immediately dropped it into the bush and act like it wasn't there. And then he came on into the door. And what a, what a model. You could say, well, you don't have to be that consecrated. Well, you know what? There's a model of somebody who explored another realm and ultimately was written in the history books as the apostle of faith. Hello. So let me see how you step beyond him and then understand exactly what, what it was you were saying about how you don't need to be quite that consecrated. Are you listening to me? It is where do you want to go with this? How much, how much earth do you want to be and have heaven? Huh? How much hell do you want to live in and have heaven? Are you listening to me? 
How much of yourself do you want to go ahead and give yourself to and expect that Jesus would be manifest through you? How much of the will of the Father at the end of the day are you really willing to do? Because I watch people pointing fingers about all these other people not doing the will of the Father. The question is, are you doing the will of the Father? Yeah. Because I hear people say, oh, I'm doing the will of the Father. Yes, I am. Okay, then let me talk to you a few minutes about how Jesus' life is being revealed in your, through you and the souls and the impact of your life. The souls that are coming in the kingdom, the souls that are being impacted by your life. Because I understand what God has called me to and what he's called you to because he said these works should you do. That would be amazing right there. Yeah. If I really recognize what Jesus would do if he were in this place, you see my motivation for prayer, huh? And I've got myself completely thrown in on this. I'm completely thrown in. I am pressing in. Somebody said, why aren't you, why aren't you fully living the life of the ministry of Jesus? Well, I tell you like right now, I cannot understand, answer that question, but I can, here's what I can tell you. I am pursuing with all that I, is within me with evidence. I hope you can see the evidence. I hope I'm guilty in your court of throwing myself into the ministry. Huh? And I'm telling you, I don't believe there's any of us that can see the life of the ministry of Jesus realized any other way. And we're never going to flow in the Holy Ghost with, the re, with those things which the Holy Ghost has made available to us for the single purpose of revealing the ministry of Jesus until we throw ourselves into the ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, I could talk about all the things that the Lord's done, in, all the miracles, all the signs and wonders that we've had in the past two weeks. I could talk about them. But for me, that is nowhere near the breakthrough of Jesus. I... You know, but, you know, if we went to comparing things, we would start breaking things down like that. Well, that wouldn't be wise. The issue is, are we going to go? Are we going to do what is right to do without having to get in to the comparisons and humiliate you to try to get up to motivate you? Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus has already told us you're going to have to come learn to me. I'm meek and lowly. If I want to walk in signs and wonders and miracles and, and I'm hungry to do it, then I'm going to learn whatever lesson he's told me to learn. He says, come learn to me. I'm uh, Meek and lowly. He told me through Peter in 2 Peter chapter 1 that I was supposed to give all attendance to making my calling election sure and in doing so add to my faith purity and to purity knowledge and these things that I should be consecrated to doing and focused on doing and understanding the value of staying in joy and the value of staying in, in love and the value, value of staying in this godliness and the value of staying in this con kindness because in that he's going to minister to me an entrance abundantly into this realm of the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I know he's not talking about heaven, and I know he's not talking about salvation, because Paul has already told us that we've already been translated into the kingdom of the Son. He's talking to us about this ministry of the kingdom of God, this, these works which he has done, and which he does through us. And then he takes it to another level and says greater works. So what, what goes on? As I give myself to these things, to give it stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I don't know the value of prayer. Well, the value of prayer will absolutely change your life. The value of prayer isn't in how long you do it, it's how deep you go. Okay, so I heard you praying a few minutes ago. You know what I heard? I heard you going deeper. That's good. Because I listen to you pray. And I can tell when people are going deeper because it's, it's a sound. It's a thing that goes on in the, whole, in the depths of your emotions and depths of your passion. It's not coming out of your head. It's not coming out of your throat. It's not coming out of your mind. It's coming out of an earnestness, an eagerness. People, I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes the only people that really touch this realm is people who have nothing. They have nothing else. I really believe that when everyone comes to reality about really what's going on in their life, they have nothing else. I believe that when everybody really comes to reality, everyone's been forgiven of much. It's just that some people start off knowing they're forgiven of much. Like the woman who was a prostitute. She knows she's forgiven of much. A person who didn't do that much sin, they don't know that they're forgiven of much. A person who, who hasn't got any, you know, talents and doesn't have any skills and, and doesn't have any intellect to be fascinated at, at, they don't have much. They don't have hardly anything. They're just like, you know, I, I think my best work would be that I could possibly be a servant. I could clean floors. Those kind of people are empty vessels. They're not high on themselves. Other people have got to have that much more of an encounter with God to recognize, man, your intellect is a messed up situation. 
It's keeping you from moving with God. It's true. Yeah. It really is true. And, you know, to break those things down for you, it really is simple to do it. Because the pride of life and the arrogance that would easily dominate our lives and self-interest run counter to lowliness and meekness. And the ministry of Jesus is here comes the Messiah. Here comes your Savior, your Deliverer. He's meek and lowly, riding on the colt of a donkey. I mean, you know. <laughs> he, he, doesn't, he, he's, he doesn't need all the fame and fortune. He is in a situation where it's easy to despise him and look down on him and, and write him off as meaningless and valueless. Where does this all converge? When we throw in everything that we have into the ministry of the kingdom of God. And I pray today, I pray tonight, that you've taken this message that the Holy Ghost delivered to you on Wednesday. And that you got on your face and said, okay, Lord, I want to see now. And I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't take long. And you want to reach lost and you, you begin to go after it. Father starts giving you all kinds of creative ideas so that you can begin to say, okay, Father, I want a plan I, that I can begin to execute. And then, you know, f for me, for example, I immediately take those things to, because the Holy Ghost is talking through me to me. As much as he's talking through me to you, he's talk, talking through me to me. And I take those things and I say, okay, Lord, how can I be more effective at what I'm doing? Father, you know, you planned, you organized it. It has to be great signs and wonders and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Father, do it. Then, I mean, for me, I've got a great motivation with you guys. I'm like, Lord, I know that you want to increase this church. I know that I'm not the only one in this church recognizing the value of the anointing and the ministry of the word that is in this place. Uh, th this is, I mean, people are asking me everywhere I go, is there a place, is there, a, you know, and, and they come and visit, is there a, a church like yours where I'm at, where I, where I live, in the region that I'm, I don't know, there's gotta be, there's gotta be somewhere, but I know there's one here. And yet, where are the workers? Where are the laborers? Because I know what God the Holy Ghost will do. He will make you, increasingly more effective. You may spend a year or two years, you know, maybe, maybe uh, it wasn't that way for me. Even when I first started, in first, when I was first born again, rededicated my life to the Lord. You may thrash around for a year or two before you get your first soul, but it's going to go more and it's going to go more and it's going to go more and more and more and more. And it's fruit that remains. All the fruit that Father has for us is fruit that remains. He demands fruit of our life. We've got to demand it too. If we don't demand it, then it's not going to, we're never going to come into agreement with the Father and it's never going to be a reality where we're saying, Father, I, I know right now. I mean, all you, for, for a person like myself, all you need to do is watch, you know, 30 minutes of the, uh, of the Democratic National Convention last night and you will get a burden for the social system and situation and depravity of our nation. And the only thing that's going to break off that yoke is a move of God. And the only way that a move of God is going to be ongoing, that is going to be valid, that is going to break and pierce through this thing is the move of God that is presented by Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So what do you do to sit there and go, oh man, I can't even believe their politics. No, it's supposed to drive you to the, to the, the proper response. Hello? Yeah. It's supposed to take you to your knees and crying out to God. Oh God, let your glory be manifested through my life. Let there be greater signs and wonders and miracles. Then the Lord's going to say to you and I, get busy. He's going to say, start, start moving. He's going to say, start moving. What's in your hand? What are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? Expand it. Broaden it. Enlarge the tents of what you're doing right now. Take the tennis post and set them out bigger. Amen. How much bigger you want to go? What, you want to go one 10% bigger? Huh? Come on, man, get bigger than that. How, go double? You want to set them out double? You want to double wide? Huh? How, how much bigger is it going to go? Father's looking for that response. He sees when people are slow to respond. He calls that lukewarmness and slothfulness. If, that, if you see that in you, you better shut that thing down. And praise God, you get to shut it down quickly with the blood of Jesus and with the heavenly bread, yes. the bread of heaven. Amen. 
and you repent. And then you got to get up and you got to face whatever it is that's been a stronghold in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, people. Yeah. Because what's going to happen then as you begin to do this, this is the school of the Spirit. The school of the Spirit is very practical in its application. It said, you wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I want to be used by you. Uh, here's what I've got in my life. Here's what the things that you've given me responsibility to do. And if you haven't given me the responsibility to do them, I pray your fire come upon them and they'd be burned away right now. Okay? And I want you to take it and use me. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you pray that prayer, but yet you still see that whatever it is you're giving yourself to do is keeping you from doing the kingdom first, then that's evidence enough that you're supposed to get rid of it. Huh? Yeah. Now, you're supposed to shut it down and stop it. Ha! Huh. Hallelujah. And, and then begin to understand, wait a minute, come on now, I want, I want to grab a hold of this thing. I want to understand how to, now to see your glory. Lord, when I show up at work, I want to be able to see your joy, your glory, your manifest power in my life. I want, to, I want your favor on the things that I do. I want to be able to, every time I talk to somebody, it pierce their heart and their soul. Because everywhere, you know, you can say, I'm going to quit work and go full-time ministry. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to go hunt another mission field. Well, you just left one, man. You just left one. You just left a mission field to go hunt a mission field. Come on. The issue is really, the issue is, uh, Ruth Anna, for example, she had a, a person in here two Sundays ago, a person that she'd been ministering to for five, six years, I think it was, five or six years, something like that. Finally, she gets her in church, five, five, just five or six years, just don't stop. That's a good example, don't stop. Five, and, and she comes to church, first time she comes to church, she gives her life to Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, unfortunately, she lives, I guess she lives in L.A. or something far away so it's hard to go pick her up and bring her and keep good but that's what you got to be committed to do you got to be you got to be committed to reaching them and teaching them huh you got to say okay well you know what this is going to cost me something yes it is now I don't get to live my own life for my own self-interest of doing what's convenient for me no you don't so now we're starting to deal with truth and when we start doing the truth Spirit truth is going to be right there. And the good news is you're going to start having yourself a good time. You've been living a boring, stale, moldy, mildew, musty kind of life. Father wants to get you out of here to breathe some fresh air. <laughs> he wants to get you out of here. He, Papa's dedicated to making us great. He wants us to step into the greatness of his glory realm, a divine power and ability. He wants us to plaster Jesus over everything that we're doing. He wants us to be right there with the authority of signs and wonders and miracles, with the word of faith in our mouth to see someone's heart transformed and changed as we're talking to them. Come on. How many altar calls do you make on a given day? And how many response do you have? As you give yourself to reaching the lost, the anointing will increase. But the whole thing is about reaching the lost. The whole program of the kingdom of God is about reaching the lost. Ultimately, when you look at the flowing of the gifts of the Spirit, which must be manifested in this church, and I command you to start doing it, and I'm going I'm to talk to you about how to do it here just a little bit briefly here in a few minutes about how to come in expectation, fully charged with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, not moving out of beyond what God has gifted you to do, but moving in that gifting that you have and expecting God to use you more because you're just so earnest. You're so earnest. Tongues is easy. Interpretation tongues is easy as tongues. Huh? Lifting up your voice and beginning to, 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 and, and to pray. Right there in the midst of the song service or right there in the transition of the song service where you begin to lift up your voice to pray and you begin to, and that prayer is really just nothing more than a prophecy and it's interwoven with some tongues. My goodness, people, come on. Start getting excited about God. Start getting in the program because that's where it begins and that launches you out into a miracle and that'll launch you out into discerning the spirits. There have been so many times I've had open visions just simply because I opened my mouth and just started praising God. Started getting excited about something. Amen. Just started getting caught away with something. When I had an open vision of Nepal's radical change, a nation being changed, it was not unlike things that I've had happen to me over and again in the context of a church service when I was worshiping God, being excited about what God was doing. Amen. Same exact thing. I was taught right here in this place to stand over a nation. 
I was taught right in the very small little framework of that which I'm doing right now to be able to stand in a nation and prophesy to a nation and tell a nation that a war, their war, their 40 year war is coming to an end and that the government will no longer look at the church as a foe but I see them as an ally and a federation of churches would be formed which all happened in a short sight of two to three months and the whole nation was changed. It just happens so easily when you so thru you thrust your life into the kingdom of God. Take your life and thrust it into the care of Almighty God. Maybe you're going to have to learn how to trust Father. Adam fell. Abraham succeeded. Jesus personified it. And God's talking to you. And you can't say, well, I'm doing this. and I'm doing What? Come on, man. Where is there room for any boasting? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I reckon, look, come on, people. Look at where the bar set. If Jesus was in this, if Jesus came tonight to San Diego, California, tomorrow the place would be packed, 10,000 people. Yeah. So, who's going to let Jesus live? Amen. Who's going to start following Jesus? Who's going to start imitating Jesus? That's good. Praise God for that. Amen. And then all what that then does is that we find ourselves then flowing in this glorious expression of the Holy Ghost because we're given over to the realms of the Holy Ghost. We're given over to the realms of the Spirit of God simple by, simply by the fact that we're obeying Him. Now we're living on the altar of sacrifice. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. We've not built an altar of abominations in our house. We've built the altar uh, that God himself has made for us at Calvary in our house, in our home, in our home, in our individual life, in our homes. There is not this dual living going on. There is not this, this conflicted living. There's not these conflicted multiple personality thing. Huh? huh? If you're not joyful and happy, you got a bad attitude, you get yourself straightened out in short order. You don't need anybody else. And you know how to do it because you know how to get yourself yielded to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Quickly. Because you know exactly what he said. He told you to get happy. He told you to walk in his nature. He told you to walk in his kindness, his gentleness, his goodness, his mercy, to behave yourself like your master. Do you think that you can have any conduct different from your master in your behavior and character and still have his ministry? If you do, you believe you're above your master. And when, you, when we look at this beautiful explosion of worship and adoration of, see, really, the gifts of the Spirit, it is an explosion of adoration and thanksgiving and being so just bursting on the inside with thanksgiving and, and affection and love and praise that, that that prayer just comes bursting forth. It is like, oh God, do you see the twisted hearts of the people in this place? Don't you, you don't get to start there. <laughs> Those are for people who are dressed in rough clothing. You, you develop in that. It's not about the things, whatever your eyes seeing about people and the problems and the issues. It's, it's an adoration and thanks for giving. Father, you're so wonderful and glorious and merciful. Father, we thank you for the anointing that is here poured out upon us. We thank you for the authority of your word and of your spirit. Just comes busting out. We thank you, Almighty God, that you stand in our midst, O oh Lord, to perform your word and those, those things that you promised to bring into pass quickly. Come on, man. Can you imagine a church filled with that kind of shouting, that kind of prayer? And it's going one and two and three at a time, sometimes one and then another one. I'm going to tell you right now, that will grow into tongues and interpretation of tongues and back to interpretation and back to tongues and prophecy and declarations and discerning of spirits and revelation and the knowledge of God going forth. And, what, and, and out of that, then there is an explosion. A faith environment begins to build. There's an explosion of the movings of the Spirit of the Lord. And there's where miracles begin to be unveiled. Signs and wonders begin to be demonstrated. And where does that go? It goes to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 where everybody who comes in, the lost, the unbeliever comes in. And they fall down on their knees saying God truly is in this place. 
because the thoughts and the secrets of their hearts are being made manifest. What happens is Satan is able to do his tricks and make this one asleep over here, this one disappointed over here, this one with a little bit of an aggravation over here, this one with some strife over here, this one with some I feel rejected and unwanted attitude over here. And Satan plays off of that and it, become, it can become the synagogue of Satan. It become more manifestation of demonic power than of God. And now you've got to have someone like myself who's a steamroller over every demon power to bust it, you know, with a word. Shake the stick at it big time, okay? Yeah, it's true. Hallelujah. Praise God for it. Run that thing off, scare that ravenous dog. Bad. Huh? And then somebody said, well, why is the rebuke? The rebuke is because of the unholy thoughts. The rebuke is because of the demonic activity on relationship levels usually. It's not on, it's not on, relation, it's not on the, the levels of overt immorality usually. It's usually in hidden thoughts and secrets of the heart that are conflicts of relationship going on in people's hearts either between each other or against God or even against the authority, uh, the authority of God on the basis of accusation against those who are anointed of the Lord. It's, a, it's an attack against the anointing by a satanic power because people don't know how to move in the Holy Ghost. You cannot do what Jesus did until you learn how to move in the Holy Ghost. The school of the Spirit is all about learning how to keep your thoughts in the knowledge of God. It is learning how to keep your attitudes and your emotion, your behavior and your manner of thinking in a realm of faith. To keep it in a realm of love. To keep it in a realm of encouragement. If there's any good thing. Huh? If there's anything to be blessed about. If there's any, if there's any truth in it. Huh? If there's any praise in it. If that's all you give yourself to, you don't allow anything else. But if you allow it in your home and your house is a sanctuary of demons, an altar to hell, an incense to strange fire, if you can't do it in the church, you're not doing it in your home. If you can't do it in the church, you can't do it in your home. You, are you with me? Yes. It's true. Because people get involved in stuff. There's this wrong, participating with evil spirits in their home. Well, you, how are you going to know the difference between good and evil? DNC doesn't, they call evil good. A preacher got up and said, I'm a preacher. And what he did was he preached that all good is evil. The undertone of what he said, all good is evil and all evil is good. If you are against lesbians and gays and bisexuals and transvestites, and they had another word in there and they got a new one, they've added another one. then you are of hate and you know nothing about the love of the Bible. He's calling good evil and evil good. And the place is roaring, roaring. They are roaring. They were jumping around like they were dancing in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, leaping, leaping. Roar, emotion extraordinary. No, it should drive you to your knees. And say, this has happened because the church has been sleeping. Because we've all been involved in the American dream. We've all working several jobs and pursuing our own interests and showing up to church just to be aggravated. Or showing up to church just to be uh, soothed in our conscience so that we can continue to go on with the life that doesn't conform to the image of Jesus. Because it can be both. I've watched meetings become very soothing. It's like, a, it's like a trance. Everybody sits there and they worship. The anointing doesn't go very high. Is there a presence of God there? Yeah. But the anointing doesn't go very high. It's just barely a blip above human things. Why? Because God loves us. And He's always calling in every condition. And just soothing. It's a soothing thing. And then it's a message that doesn't challenge very much. Huh? And then everybody fell, files out feeling good about the life that they're living that is contrary to obedience to God. The life that they're living that has nothing to do with the plan and the will of Father for our lives. 
So that's it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Then you sit in a church like this where the fire of God's being leveled at you, the word of God is being leveled at you. You, you are a hundred times more accountable yep. than those people. Yep. You are a hundred times more accountable. Yeah. You, you, I'm, this, to whom much is given, much is required. And Father's given you much knowledge in His will and in His Word and the anointing of the Holy Ghost dealing much with you and many opportunities. Father's opened up the door of opportunity to everyone. But we're going to have to say, wait, this is the best thing that I could possibly ever imagine. This is what I want to do with my life. To where you really begin to believe, wait a minute, Father's opened up the door to unlimited exploration of His divine power and glory, of laying hold of giftings and mantles, and anointings, and authority. Does it cost us something? Yes, it costs us our self-interest. We must deny ourselves. Does it cost us something? Yes, a cross. We must lay down our life and be willing to go through what Jesus did, went through. Jesus received great honor from the Father, but he received great dishonor from men. And they said his signs and his wonders and miracles were done by Beelzebub, the devil. We're not above our master. They're going to say the same thing of us. That's okay. We've got to be ready for it. We've got to be willing to let God train us in it and not be taking offense over the slightest little sneeze of provocation. Oh, when you give yourself over to the Holy Ghost because you obey God. You cannot give yourself over to the Holy Ghost disobeying God. Are you under authority? How many people in this place believe they're under authority? I want you to raise your hand. Then that you obey the people that are over you in the Lord. And that's good because if you're not under authority, you're never going to be given any authority. If you do not learn, if you cannot learn how to serve, you cannot learn how to lead in God. Because if you're not learning how to come under authority and learn how to serve, you're not willing to give yourself to come and sit at the master's feet and be taught lowliness and meekness. <laughs> to come and understand that before there's honor, there must be humility. That, you've got, that you and I must learn how to cast all of our care and trust to the Lord and humble ourselves under his mighty hand and that he will exalt us when we're ready. That's due time. That's good. Coming under authority, having people who love us and watch after our soul. You know what the Lord told me a long time ago? That he doesn't hand, hand out unsolicited advice. And I said, oh, okay, Bob, I won't either then. Where people got to come and seek it, and then the Spirit of the Lord will speak. They got to humble themselves and say, what, where? I'm reaching to God. What to it for, for direction? What to do? Reach to God with me. Well, somebody says that to me, I'm going to get, in, I'm going to get a direction, right? But usually, I'm going to, bang, it's going to hit me. Here's what Father says of you. Why? Because especially, you know, people that are in this church, that's the part of, what, of being a pastor. Amen. And then I get that. I get that at, at other people's churches. I would submit to the pastor and say, hey, pastor, I've got something. Can I, can I go do this? Pat would just call me up and tell me. He was standing at, a, at the door of the church the other night. Evidently, it was a very large church because he had everybody coming in. Everybody came in. He gave, uh, he prophesied over him. He said, so, you know, he said, here comes a girl. Hey, I see two devils sitting on your shoulder right there. And he begins to lay it out. He said, and I take authority over those demon spirits. And I cast down the powers of darkness. That have, and he began to read her mail. And suddenly, you know, those things begin to be made manifested. And she was mutilating herself, cutting herself. And, she, and, and the scars disappeared right there in the foyer. So you're giving words and knowledge. Just backing them up in line when you get it. You need, you need five or six people doing it that way. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. That anointing. Come on, man. This is fun stuff. Yes. Seeing people get set free. It's a little bit, you know, if you're all over in a humanistic realm, you're not going to say, I see two devils sitting on your shoulder. You're going to be talking about, oh, how are you doing? Oh, sweet. You got two devils sitting there. I'm like, there's two, de there's two devils sitting there, but I'm not going to tell him. Oh, you're such an angel. You're never going to move in the ministry of Jesus because you speak after the manner of men. You're not willing to do and say what God says and declare what God is declaring because secular humanism has a, has a claw in you and you want to empathize and sympathize and connect with the human realm. You cannot connect with the Holy Ghost when you're connecting with the human realm. You cannot. God connected with the, with the heavenly realm and was moved with compassion from the heavenly realm, looking at the people as they were as sheep scattered without a shepherd. Huh? Yeah. 
as he was there ministering to them, seeing the, the sick and the diseases, sickness and diseases go and the torments leave. And in that context, he said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he raise up laborers because look and see, the harvest is ripe. Right now, people, there are so many options and so many opportunities to do things in very practical ways to touch people's lives. I had a man telling me the other night, I was sitting with him in Iowa, Ann and I, and he said, I worked in the prisons, and I can't remember how many years, and he said, I had to work with the worst criminals in the prison, keeping them locked up. He went through the list, murderers and rapists and on and on. He said, I got to the point that I hated men. I hated everything about men. I wanted to not be around any men, any human beings. So I became so hard. All I want is to be here in my house, my dog, my wife, my kids, nobody else. He said, my son got diseased, got a disease. He was a chiropractor and got some kind of a disease, became disabled, and finances went away. He said he was over and they were trying, he was over with his son, trying to figure out how they could take care of the situation with the house that he had just moved in because it was in total disrepair. Part of the roof was off. One of the back walls was out. Animals could come in. It was a mess. He said he had a knock on the door. He opened up the door. There was two men standing there from a local church. He said, we're here to fix your house. He watched them as they pulled all their carpenter tools out, brought a, a flat bed full of lumber, and he, and, he, and, he, and he was busted. God totally broke off the stronghold of his life. Just through something as simple as that. Huh? He said, I didn't even know there was any human beings left that cared about anybody. I mean... People, that is, would be the, on the level of the least of the things. But I'm going to tell you right now, that is huge because of the reward of just simply touching one man's heart and one man's life and liberating one man with one act of kindness. How much bigger would you and I start flowing in the Holy Ghost the way God told us to do it? And we don't weary in well-doing because we're going after something big and we get wisdom and insight from God how to do it in a very practical way to touch people's lives, to love on people, instead of it being some kind of an obligation. And I, I actually allowed a person in this church one time, they're not in the church anymore because I finally sorted them out and said, why are you even here, man? And they decided, yeah, really, why am I even here? And they left. But every time they went to do anything, they always went with a bad attitude. It was like big frown on their face. If you go pick somebody up, are you ready to go? Look, we're late. I don't have much time. I've sacrificed to get here. Are you ready? That attitude. Uh, what is that? That is actually a hindrance to church growth. That's actually a hindrance to the kingdom of God. That isn't doing anybody any good. That's actually doing the opposite of it. I'm making the point because you can have something very practical and you're not moving in just the simple pleasantness of and goodness and kindness of the fruit of the Spirit of just loving it because you're getting to do something in service to the King of Kings and you're allowing. That should be enough to make you happy. But the Holy Spirit moves in with happiness if you've learned how to yield to Him and submit yourself to Him. That's what prayer is all about. That's what the reading of the Word of God is supposed to be all about. The Word of God is spirit and life. It comes in and it impacts every part of your life. We're born of the Spirit. We're born of the Word. And as we give ourselves to the working of the Word of God, it causes us to grow and, and mature because it's, it's sincere. It's real, true nourishment. Just like we receive nourishment for our body and we grow physiologically, we receive nourishment for our spirit from the Word and we grow spiritually in that love and that kindness and that generosity and that goodness and that joy and that pleasantness just begins to explode beyond the human human level. It goes into a divine level. We're supposed to be walking around in a divine level. I see so many people who've never stepped in to a divine level to even have the joyous disposition of heaven on their face when they come to church. Much less prophecy. Much less anything 
that describes what God said is supposed to be being manifested in his church that his, that his church may be viewed as the very personification of Jesus, the fullness of him that fills all things. We're not even dedicated enough to the will of the Father to be smile. You think about that. You think about how lost people are that sit in churches. Because from, from Matthew 7, 21 to 1 John 2, 17, the Lord makes it all about doing the will of the Father. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. You never did the will of the Father. I do not know you. I have no fellowship with you. The understanding that the world and the lust there will pass away, but he that does the will of God endures, abides, dwells forever. I mean, we gotta have, we got to carry this, people. Yeah. And I don't believe you ever get in, in, in any dimension of a place to even start participating with the Holy Ghost until you throw yourself into the ministry and you make yourself responsible for a lost and dying world of whether people are going to go to heaven or stay in their bondage of hate and offense and, and, and sickness and disease and cruel treatment and abuse. The statistics on how many young girls right now in this area, right here in this, in this region, that cut themselves and abuse themselves, it is, it is mind-blowing. I, I, my mind can't even relate to that. It's just a manifestation of demon power being expressed even on whole other levels, and they give themselves over to all kinds of sexual immorality in the midst of it. Well, we're going to move with the compassion of the Holy Ghost, and we're going to seek and save that which is lost. Yes. Yes. We're going to be on the right side. When somebody tells us we're not interested, we know they're saying they are. Yes, yes. amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. And we're reaching to God to be able to, take the, to have the keys to their heart. Yes. Even as Jesus had with Nathaniel, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Jesus could have just said, you know what? You're just going to have to believe what the prophet said. No, he had the key to the heart. I saw you gave the word of knowledge. I saw you sitting in the fig tree. I know who you are. Come on, people. If we're willing to be without this, then we're playing games if we're saying that we're doing the will of the Father because this is the express will of the Father for you and I to follow Jesus, to imitate Jesus, to imitate God, to be baptized with a special power. See, they had all power and authority over sickness and diseases at Luke 9, 1. They had all authority over all authority and power over all unclean spirits and diseases. All unclean spirits to cast them out and diseases to cure them. But the Lord tells them there is another dimension of power. There is another realm that you're going to encounter. You must go and wait until you baptize with the Holy Ghost and, and, and fire. They had to go and they had to pay the price, the risk. They had to deny themselves. They had to give themselves over to the direction of God to have that encounter. And those same things happened with us. But it was a new type of power. It was even a greater power. It was a power to see people's lives transformed and changed in heart and spirit in nature hallelujah as they had come forth as a new creation by resurrection power and life that goes through their lips it's a power and authority to stop Satan in his tracks it was more power and authority than that they had they had already received authority to tread upon scorpions and serpents and overall the power of the enemy they had already received that power now they're receiving a power to turn men from the power of Satan to take men that Satan claimed out of his hand and bring them into the kingdom come on people let us let us let us be valiant let there be some Somebody in this place, let there be somebody on this in this nation, in this city, in this earth that will rise up and be valiant. God is looking for an army, not just individuals. He's looking to mobilize a great company of people. Yes. You and I have to get over ourselves in every way, on every level, and if we allow it in one area, it's going to impact every area. So shut it down. God, the Holy Ghost. When you're interested, when we're interested, God, the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom to say, "Yep, that's nothing but you." And the best thing you can start doing is repenting a whole lot. Hmm? Yeah. How many of you have allowed your wife to tell you every time yourself is being revealed? And your husband. Husbands, you've allowed your wives and wives, you've allowed your husbands. You need to let your kids kick in. <laughs> Just let me know if you don't see me walking in the Holy Ghost. Just say, hey, S. Just a signal. <laughs> and, then, and, then you, and then you don't retaliate. 
out of a realm of pride and arrogance, but you repent. Oh, you're right. I'm so sorry, Father. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you to the people that you're offending. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me through all this. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Holy Spirit, strengthen me right now. Lord, I want to walk with you and move with you. Because if you don't have this, if there's not some way for you to come into the discipline of discipleship to the Holy Ghost, you're never going to grow. You're going to continue to justify bad behavior because I've watched it as a pastor. I've seen people that if you try to measure them on, on a spiritual maturity it, of, over the years, there would be, there would be no growth. There'd be no growth. They look, act, same demeanor, same response, same behavior they did the day the first day you made them. What's that? You know, you, you got to say, you know, is it me? That's the best thing to do. Just curl up to Christ Jesus and go, Lord, is it me? I know it isn't me. How do I know it's not me? I throw myself into the ministry. I throw myself into the ministry. And you can know that it isn't you because you throw yourself into the ministry. You give yourself to these things. It's highest priority on your list. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 10 are the highest priority on your list. The call of the Lord Jesus Christ to come and learn of loneliness and meekness, highest priority on your list. Being led by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, giving yourself over to the flow of the Holy Ghost, highest priority on your list because you've tasted and seen, and it is good. I mean, it is a good time, and you want more. Now, here's what I want you to do. Every person in this place, I want you to get rid of your frowns. If you need deliverance, each time you come to the meeting, we're going to set up a deliverance room. We'll set up a deliverance room. We'll have gag bags and everything else in there, anything you might need. We'll get some, some flags to wave around, shopping carts to push, horns to blow, whatever you need. I'm just kidding. But it, we'll set up the deliverance room. And we'll just sort you out and just say, look, you know, you look like you need deliverance. Tell me that I'm wrong. Try to convince me that I'm wrong. Because the, the appearance on your face is supposed to have something that looks like joy. There's an expression of the Holy Ghost of love and affection and kindness and generosity and compassion and goodness and the laying down of your life. Not, you're not supposed to walk around looking like you're in a bubble, don't touch me. <laughs> or looking like you're in some kind of a prison, I'm offended. Or living under the tyranny of fear and intimidation. But just begin to give yourself, saying, wait a minute, I'm going up to the house of God. There has to be signs and wonders and miracles because if the lost come in, God has purposed that they see a display of heaven and of his power, that the thoughts of the intent of their heart would be revealed and falling down in the place, they would say, truly, God is here. Amen. And I'm personally responsible yeah. for that. Amen. I can't be playing with the kids and doing all this other stuff while people are being distracted behind me or doing whatever else it is that you're doing. Because you're just totally oblivious to the fact that somebody's soul weighs in a balance. Come on, people. You can't ever get this. But by the Holy Ghost, living in a human realm, you'll never understand it. It's only when you get changed and filled with the love of God. Filled with the love of God is the number one description that you've been born again. Filled with the love of God. Not the love that they were talking about at DNC. <laughs> but the love that Jesus showed us where you just are so filled with love, you're willing to bless those who persecute you, love those who hate you. You're willing to lay down your life for those who reject you and offend you and minister to them and tell them that you love them with something that is an explosive and contagious expression of God the Holy Ghost. This is it. This is the starting place. You can't start there. We can't talk about you moving on to obey God in anything else because you're not above your master. Jesus said, you know my disciples. How? For? 
Jesus, their love for Jesus. No, their love for one another. Because what people do is, you'll tell his disciples because they're always talking about their love for Jesus. I just love them so much. Yeah, but you hate everybody else around you. <laughs> By virtue of your expression, your concern, and your care, if we have to model it based upon the love that God has defined in his word and modeled in Christ Jesus, it ain't love. If it isn't love, there's only one go-to. Are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't look like his love, it's one thing to say, look, you know what? I'm maturing in his love. Fine. But it starts off good. It starts off Holy Ghost style. <laughs> Not human style. Huh? Yeah. Come on, people. Come on. It isn't the kind of love that you show and the generosity you show to your boss so you can get a raise. This is real, genuine love coming from your heart. It's a smile that you don't turn into a frown as soon as you walk out the door. It's a contagious, overwhelming flood of a wellspring springing. Something that Jesus defined as salvation. The very basis of it. People, it, you, you have a responsibility to have the proof of salvation and redemption in your life. And if you don't give yourself to the proof of it, it just shows that you're spew out material. Lukewarm, at best, lukewarm at best. Backslidden at worst. We don't want that for anybody. But what about a false witness? What about someone comes in? They're so excited about Jesus and they look at you and become completely discouraged and they think it was all a lie. Well, the Lord said it would be better for you to commit suicide than to have done that because I know of no greater description of offending someone or casting a stumbling block. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Then they looked at you and your life and they became completely discouraged that this isn't real. Hello. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You better get yourself a real relationship with Jesus yeah. and carry the responsibility of what it means to walk with him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you don't get to live your little self, sad, sorrowful little life anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Selfful, sorrowful. Sadful life anymore. Yeah. And I hope that you're happy about being delivered from that. Yes. Yes. A responsibility that you have yes. to be delivered from. Yes. This is the school of the Spirit. Yes. This is practical application to this simply doing what God said to do. Because you can speak with the tongues of men and angels. And if this is not displayed in your life, it profits you nothing. Thus, you can never interpret. Thus you'll never prophesy. Thus you'll never, it will never go to where it's supposed to in miracles and never develop in signs and wonders. It'll never develop in any display of the power of God beyond just the sound of a tinkling cymbal and the sound of a brass. It's true. It's true. Believe me. It's true. It's true. I had my son ask me the other day, I just want you to hear this. He said, I was in, I was in a meeting and someone walked in and, that we know and, and they started speaking in tongues and it was so, it just it made my skin crawl, Dad. What's that? I said, well, let me just tell you first and foremost, they have received a real baptism in the Holy Ghost of evidence of speaking in tongues. They just came out of their mess. that they have been trapped in most of their life, that they've never really matured out of, that it takes them going through a Holy Ghost meeting where every devil in hell is run out of the place before they start touching that realm. And you got to hear the downside. People, let's go ahead and go before God. Let's go ahead and grow and mature. Wouldn't it be terrible if you're speaking in tongues and somebody said it felt like my my skin was crawling. He was just, it was just, he was evil. It was evil. It's demonic. Pretty radical, eh? Yeah. To be that compromised. So much of the church is that compromised. They're so compromised with the world. They're so compromised with self. If you can grab this one thing. The disciple's not above his master. If you're going to do the works of the master, you're going to do it the way he did it. He spent all night prayer vigils. He fasted. He gave himself to seeking God. He gave himself to 
complete abandonment of his own self-interest and said, I do nothing of myself. I only do what Father shows me. I only, I'm, I'm only doing this by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm completely submitted to the Holy Spirit in this. I do nothing out of any other suggestion. Not mama, not devils, nobody. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. Mama suggested it, but he said, what woman? And then the Lord, then Father went in and said, no, go ahead and do it. And he, went, he obeyed Father, not Mama, when he turned the water into wine. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Learning to hear him. Somebody said, I want to learn to hear him. Give yourself to prayer. Praying with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost. Give yourself to building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Give yourself to this realm that Jesus showed us and that he pr provided for us when he gave us this wellspring springing and this river flowing out and this wonderful intercession of the Holy Ghost who makes intercession for our weaknesses. Give yourself to this place of communion and fellowship. Hallelujah. Give yourself to being built up in the things of the Spirit and the Word of God and 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 the spirit and life that is in it and give yourself to obedience because it's all about reaching the lost and you're going to throw yourself in to reaching the lost. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. People, I am, I am going after reaching the lost. Amen. Come on. I'm not sitting on the sideline telling you to go reach the lost. Yeah. Yeah. I'm reaching, I'm actively involved in reaching the lost. Come on. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is modeling it. I'm modeling it. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> are you following? Because everybody raised their hand and said that there's under authority and submitted to leadership. Somebody said, but you don't understand. I went out and, and I've labored and I tried to reach him and nothing happened. You need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Well, I thought I had. Well, obviously you haven't. Or if you have, you've not given yourself to that faith realm enough to have a... a a result, but I'm not, I'm not only go with the model and the precedence, okay? Baptized in the Holy Ghost, they went out and 3,000 got saved. I mean, you baptize in the Holy Ghost, you start ministering people, they're going to get saved. You, you give an altar call, people are going to come. Yeah. The other day, we gave an altar call on the elevator. We gave an altar call at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a counter, hotel counter. Gave an altar call Different places of giving altar calls. It's not my favorite place to give altar calls because I'm always like, if I don't have a church to, to get them in, I'm a little bit, but I'll still give them an altar call, get them in a church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we got water nearby, let's get some water. If nothing else, let's get a bottle of water. We'll sprinkle them. <laughs> Pour it on them. And of course, when we're ministering to other people's church, is that great? That's great. We had a congregation, and the, the other day we were at ministering. We had a congregation in the foyer of the hotel. The pastor was there. We were gathering them together, you know, calling them into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Calling the fire got down on them right there. Say, here's the pastor. Come over here. Let me introduce you to the pastor. Just have a revival meeting right there in the foyer of the church. A foyer of the hotel. I mean, let's just be us. Let's just be us. They're being them. Let's be us. The transvestite is being a, 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 you know, a giant in the kingdom of the darkness. Let's you and I be full of the Holy Ghost, be a giant in the kingdom of, the, of God. Come on. They're not, ashamed of, they're not ashamed of their God. They're not ashamed of their devils. They're not ashamed of that which they sold their soul to. How could we be ashamed of him in an adulterous and sinful generation? How? How could we be any less than desperate to allow the power of God that has been made available to us to be expressed through our lives? How could we be anything less than ready to get up and go? Practical application of Jesus. Because the beautiful thing of it is, man, John said, I write these things unto you so your joy may be full. In other words, he wrote those things unto us. Not that our joy would be full because we read it. Huh? He wrote those things unto us that our joy may be full because in reading we would do it. Yeah. We would know exactly what we're supposed to do. And in doing it, then that's why people are going to get happy. People are sad because they're not obeying God. A Christian who's not obeying God is one of the saddest, miserable people on the planet. Do you want to go to church with them? I don't want to go anyplace with them. <laughs> Period. No fellowship. Hello. Yeah. And no one else wants to either. Except for your mama. 
And she doesn't want to. She just sold out. And I just want to provoke you. Don't act so human anymore. Quit acting like yourself and saying you're pleasing God. Give yourself over to the will of the Father. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Dear people, I want you to start saying, instead of saying, Lord, let your river flow through me, I want you to start saying, Lord, I'm going to start letting your river flow through me. Okay. Just start getting it really where it's at. Lord, I'm going to start letting your glory. I'm going to start yielding my members to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to start obeying you. I'm going to live for you. People, can I get you to do this? Can I get you to do this? Don't leave your house unless you're full of the Holy Ghost, even to go to the grocery store. Please, somebody might know that you're a Christian. <laughs> or just wear a hat, not saved today. Not saved today. Witness is no longer active. Whatever. Because if you'll do that, if you'll recognize your responsibility, everywhere we go, we're a cloud of His witness. We're a cloud of witness. We're a cloud of glory. Everywhere we go, there's divine appointments. Everywhere we go, all we've got to get is enough insight and discernment and sensitivity to the Holy Ghost to recognize that they're all around us, continually all around us. All around us. If you don't know how to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost, you're going to go talk to the person with a, divine, with a demonic assignment against you rather than the divine, you know, the divine appointments. Huh? Yeah. He, he just goes right to the demonic assignment. They just captivate your whole time and argue with you. Why five people walked by that could have been reached. Come on, Come on now. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. If I give myself, I'm not earnest. I'm hungry about it. I'm real with God. Father, I'm getting ready to leave the house. I showered. I, I, I shaved. I didn't shave. I, 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 I got dressed. I did all the pre these things that are necessary in a human realm. But Father, I haven't touched heaven yet. Lord, let me touch you now. Father, forgive me for not touching you if, if that's the case, if you're not filled with this realm of heaven. I can cast out devils at 2 o'clock in the morning, dude. You wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning, I cast out a devil. I'm telling you right now. I have people call me at late hours. You know, I, I usually keep the phone in, in, in the other room, and it's always, but the Lord, you know, times of the Lord to just get me up and I, I'll just get up. I don't really know why I'm up. And then the phone will ring. I look. And I usually always answer if it's a pastor calling me. Pastors need help. It's true. If you're calling me, I may not answer, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I just ministered to you yesterday. <laughs> I told you what to do. You need to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just spoke the word of faith to you, man. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. In Jesus' name. Parabastakia. See miracles, signs, wonders happening. Hallelujah. Mandabrasia. That as soon as somebody asks, as soon as someone asks you to pray, it, it comes fiery. It didn't come down a little, a little shallow prayer, trying to think of what to say. It comes fiery. With, with, it's a prayer of faith. It's strong. Bold, hallelujah. No matter what time it is, because it's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Somebody asks you to preach, you ready. Because you've given yourself to the Word. You're enriched by the Word. You're ready to preach. You, go, you, take that, you can take the Word of God and begin to lay it out there. And the, and, the, and, the, and the manifest presence of the Holy Ghost is right there with you. Come on. This is what happened. Somebody said to me the other day, they, you know, they said, where did you get that anointing? And it was a king. And a king, people who have those, people who have those positions, they know power. They know power. It's a king, son of a king, of son of a king, of son of a king. Royal, royalty. They know power. Where did you get that anointing? Where did you get that power in your life? And I just, I didn't say anything. They were sitting around a bunch of kings and dignitaries. I just pointed up towards heaven like that. And of course, the anointing was strong there too. Believe me. The Lord was saying a lot. I didn't have to say nothing. But in reality, if I said, 
on the street corner preaching, one-on-one, -on -one, just talking to people, being, waking up in the morning, caring for out souls, saying, Lord, give me a divine appointment today. Let me speak into someone's life. Lord, I don't want to come as a scribe and a th as a Pharisee. Lord, I don't, want to, I don't want to come just as anybody else just trying to sell some goods. Lord, I want to speak by your spirit the way you speak. I want to care the way you care. I want to love the way you love. I want to understand how to have compassion for the most, un, uh, the most unworthy, the most unholy, the most unacceptable. That's what God's doing. You don't go, to, you don't go with love for people. The Holy Ghost ain't going to ever flow. He's, he's, not, he's not mixing it up with us. He's the spirit of truth. He will only go with truth. He's in truth. It's all about his compassion and his love. In the name of Jesus Christ tonight, you hear this. Yeah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ tonight, your ears be opened. You just understand, like, the Lord's called you to deny yourself. Don't think it a strange thing. He called you to deny yourself. Everybody, would you stand with me? I want, I want you tonight. I want to walk out of here tonight knowing that you've heard the will of the Father, the divine assignment for your soul, and that you will linger no longer. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the way the moving of God's already taking place. I mean, that's the way it happens. As soon as Naomi senses any kind of an altar call, she's ready, hands up in the air. Praise God. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Just keep those hands right up there, baby. Hallelujah. Do not delay. Don't harden your heart. Get, get under authority so that you can begin to move in authority. Get serious with God. Get serious with God. There's some of you that really just need to get serious with God. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> He's serious with you. He loves you very much. He's not going to exclude you. People, I do not want you to act like me. I want you to act like Jesus. I don't want you to be locked down and confined to the expressions of this local ministry. I want you to be functioning in the unlimited realm of His heavenly ministry. Oh, please, please, I beg you, I beg you in Jesus' name, obey God. Please, I beg you in Jesus' name, please, Quit being a witness for yourself. Quit, quit living your own life, wearing the expressions of your own problems and issues and, and, and stuff. And give yourself over to being a servant bought with a price. And he's told you to walk in his joy, in his generosity, in his kindness and goodness. Quit living your own selfish life, living out your own expressions. Stop it! Stop it! You're scaring us all. Stop it! You're scaring the children. In Jesus' name, stop it! You're freaking the newborn babes completely out. Stop it! Stop it! In Jesus' name. I command you to stop it! Stop living for yourself! Stop thinking your own thoughts. Stop walking after your own emotions and your own expressions. Give yourself over as a servant of Jesus Christ to be under the authority of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. I got so blessed this morning. I was reading Ezra. And after Ezra had received from kings... Cyrus II, the gold and the silver and all of the appointed things and vessels, a great breakthrough because they had so much opposition. In his heart, he was feeling intimidated and afraid because he knew how many enemies were out there that was ready to kill them and steal everything they got. But he was too ashamed to go to the king and say, will you give us a protective guard? Because he had already bragged on God and how protective God was. And he wasn't going to be a false witness. Ezra, thank you. Ezra, thank you. Here are some people who care about God's reputation that's being ruined on their face. Come on. 
ruined in their actions, ruined in their display and manner of life. Oh, let the valiant people of God stand up. Let somebody who cares begin to move around. Let somebody who's called is a cause that God has given begin to take hold of that which he supplied. In Jesus' name. God, the Holy Ghost is crying. He's desperate. He's desperate for this nation. He's God. God is doing things, but he's got to have a people that will respond. Events are going to happen. Events are happening right now. But I'm going to tell you right now, if we do not respond to the events that are taking place, it will get worse. You cannot do anything about anyone else. You cannot change Hillary Clinton, the DNC, Donald Trump, or anyone else. You can't change somebody on, in another state, in another nation. But you can change you. You can decide what you're going to do. You can decide that you're going to be different. You can decide you're going to give yourself over to walking in the Holy Ghost, to living out the light that God has described, beginning with this love, this generous love, this wonderful place and disposition of joy, this wonderful place of that wellspring that God has provided. You, you can decide tonight that you're going to begin to, to be a witness like never before. And I, I promise you, I promise you, Heaven will notice. Heaven will notice. Father will notice. Father will go, oh, somebody has taken up my righteous cause. Thank you. I'm going to walk into heaven and I'm going to hear Father say, thank you, son. And I purpose that you walk in heaven and you hear Father say, thank you, son. Thank you, daughter. Thank you that you were willing to live the life that I commanded, the, the, the blessing that I've given. Thank you that you were willing to deny yourself, take up your cross, and imitate me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I goodness, you think about God's commandments. He's commanded us to be in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Whoa, he's commanded us. That's like way bigger than him commanding us to be blessed and wealthy and rich. He's commanded us to live our life in him. That, come on. He's commanded us to be empowered with his joy. Come on. The school of the Spirit. The school of the Spirit. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I remember, I remember looking at the people in Japan and Okinawa and they said, oh, could you please stay here with us and teach us the school of the Spirit? And I had to tell them, no, I can't, but you can turn it on the web when we do it, when we do school of the Spirit in America. But someday, someday, it's going to happen. God's going to set you up in this place. There's going to be people that are going to come to you. And they're going to show you how to move in signs and wonders. I want you to go and be those people. And you get to go and be those people because God has sent you out of this place to go and be those people. Yes. To go lay hands on the sick. Jesus' ministry, every time he sent anyone out, to lay hands on the sick. Go deliver them from demon spirits. First and foremost, all authority and power over unclean spirits. So first and foremost, you must bound in the strong man. Deliver them from the powers of darkness and tormenting them. I set you free in the name of Jesus. I come to bless you. I come to bless this house. Any, anybody been knocking on doors yet? Going door to door yet? You've been going door to door? That's good. And you know, saying, just look, we're here to bless you. We want to bless you guys. Why are you guys Jehovah's Witness? Sorry that the Jehovah's Witness are the only people who got a reputation of going out and telling people about God. Why do you guys, yeah, why do you guys, uh, um, Latter day Saints, sorry they're the only ones that are doing anything. No, but we're, we're not. We're, we're God. We're God's Saints. Amen. Yeah. But we're here to bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Papa's going to make you smart. He's going to give you wisdom. He's going to give you wisdom. He's going to make you smart. You go out there and you start telling people we're going to do Saturday surf camp. We'll pay for the buses. We'll pay for the vans. You'll fill up two vans in no time. 13 people, 26 people. And, they're going to, and, and if you say it's free, it, they're going to be falling all over themselves saying there's something wrong. Um, you know, Sandy said to me, he says, no one's even done anything with San Diego Youth Development website. I said, no joke. So, you know, yeah, you need to, you need to develop it. I mean, you guys got to do it. You guys got to get in the ministry, man. Yeah. You mean get in the ministry. Yeah. Come on. So I need somebody to tell me what to do. No, you know, well, why don't you listen to all the ghosts? We're telling you all kinds of things to do. <laughs> well, I tried that. We'll try something else. As you begin to move in obedience to God, he'll give you wisdom and insight. He will, I promise you. Hallelujah. 
Well, find everybody in the house and hug them, tell them you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. And tell them you're dedicated, man. You're going to start walking in love. And just go ahead and give them permission and say, just go ahead and give people around you, give them permission and say, if you, say, if I look scary, tell me.